So, um, can I welcome Mikhail Rosteski to talk about psyllium? Okay, so I'm Michał Rostecki. I'm working as a software engineer at SUSE and I'm working mostly on Cilium. And today I will introduce to the project and uh, uh, um, tell you about the updates since last year because last year on FOSDEM there was also another talk about Cilium. So I will uh, focus uh, on what changed in Cilium since that time after the brief introduction to the project. So I will start from the introduction actually. Um, but to intro, uh, introduce uh, what, uh, and explain what psyllium is, I need to start from BPF, a BPF, the mechanism and kernel. So uh, BPF is the Berkeley packet filter, the virtual machine and kernel which allows you to write programs which uh, monitor Cisco's or filter network packets. Uh, and uh, uh, that uh, kind of program needs to be written in C in the user space compiled by uh, CLANG to the bytecode and then that bytecode is loaded to the kernel through Verifier and JIT and executed in the virtual machine and then um, that program um, deals with uh, network packets or with um, uh, Cisco's inside the kernel. And Cilium is um, uh, a set of programs which uh, takes advantage of BPF to uh, implement uh, networking for container runtimes. So Cilium um, consists of the daemon, of the agent which is running on every node uh, where we have container workloads. Um, it has also API and CLI, so you can manage Cilium. Uh, it integrates with many... Uh, orchestration system and uh, uh, container runtime systems. So for example, uh, if you just want to try Cilium on one machine, you can use it just with Docker. But the most common use case is using if, with or, uh, orchestration systems like Kubernetes or Mesos. Um, and then uh, uh, Cilium, uh, in the most cases, allocates IP addresses for, uh, for containers or pods if we are talking in uh, terms of Kubernetes um, and creates VF pairs uh, for the network namespace and then on top of that it um, uh, cre um, creates BPF programs which are attached to the, uh, the um, VF interfaces which filter packets and filter traffic going to containers. And it, uh, especially in, t um, in context of Kubernetes, uh, Cilium implements two things, two concepts. Uh, there is a concept of container network interface. So uh, Kubernetes supports multiple uh, um, network providers which uh, implement the CNI specification and Cilium is one of them. So Cilium uh, can allocate the IP address and create uh, networking for the network namespace uh, according to the CNI specification. And then Cilium agent uh, uh, is listening, uh, is watching Kubernetes API for the another concept which is called network policies. In Kubernetes you can uh, provide policies uh, from which pod to which pod you can connect or not. Uh, so, uh, or provides uh, um, the list of IP addresses, for example. So, in general, network policies in Kubernetes are something I would say like firewall rules for Kubernetes and for uh, orchestrated containers. And uh, Cilium is implementing the concept and uh, watching for a Kuberne uh, on Kubernetes API, and then it generates uh, BPF programs uh, based on the data. Um, Kubernetes has uh, its um, concept of network policies, but uh, Cilium also extends it a bit and provides more features than uh, pure network policies in Kubernetes, but I will tell about that a little bit later. Uh, and now I will get to the part what's new in Cilium. Uh, but before that, uh, let's note the effect. Uh, before, um, before the previous FOSDEM, the last released version was zero, uh, 0 0.12. Uh, so uh, Cilium reached the 1.0 uh, 
uh, milestone a little bit after Pius Fosden, around uh, April 2018. Uh, now the newest version, which was uh, released uh, around November, is 1.3. And the uh, version which we are preparing to release um, after FOSDEM is uh, uh, version 1.4. And uh, from the 1.0 milestone, uh, Cilium guarantees the API stability, is the support of releases and uh, downgrades and upgrades in between each version, which wasn't that obvious before. Uh, version 1.0 was released. And now I will tell uh, about uh, features which were introduced in between 1.0 and 1.3 version. So uh, the first thing um, which is quite important is uh, integration with Envoy and Istio. Unfortunately my talk right now is very short so I'll be not able to like introduce to the whole concept of Envoy at Istereo um, in, in details. But in general, uh, Envoy is a, a sidecar R7 proxy, which is used to uh, redirect the traffic uh, uh, between services uh, on uh, L7 layer. Uh, and it's commonly used in Kubernetes. And Istereo is um, uh, technology which implements the concept of service mesh by using Envoy. And service mesh um, is something which guarantees that the traffic in between your services in your cluster uh, is secured, encrypted. Uh, it provides the um, functionality of ingress, so of exposing uh, your services you have inside the cluster, outside the, uh, the uh, internal uh, cluster network, so to the outside internet, um, and also implements network policies on its own. And uh, Cilium um, um, integrates perfectly with Istio uh, because uh, it provides its um, own extensions to Envoy. And here um, on the slide you can notice that um, Cilium can defend the compromised Envoy, and I'll explain what I have in mind by that. So Envoy and Istio support uh, network policies and filtering, but on uh, IP, uh, IP version 4 and um, on TCP only. So uh, there is a chance that Envoy can be compromised by IPv6 or UDP traffic and uh, Cilium supports filtering those kind of traffics. So, yeah, um, Cilium basically can still uh, block some potential uh, vector of attacks associated with uh, IPv6 or uh, UDP. Um, and yeah, um, and Envoy usually, um, um, provide the ne uh, network policies uh, based on uh, IP tables, uh, but um, Cilium uh, extends the Envoy binary with its own L7 filter, which is based on BPF. There is also support for additional container runtimes in Cilium. So, um, bef uh, yeah, last year Cilium was only supporting, for example, Kubernetes clusters with Docker, and now uh, Cilium's able to work with Cryo and ContainerD also. And Cilium provides also Prometheus metrics uh, in uh, many, many uh, Prometheus metrics. So, for example, on your Grafana dashboard for Kubernetes cluster, you can look uh, how many addresses were allocated, how many nodes are available, and so on and so on. And there is also a concept of cluster mesh. So, if you have multiple Kubernetes clusters, uh, Cilium actually can um, 
connect the pods from different Kubernetes clusters and it provides the IP connectivity for those pods and provides also security rules for that. And uh, it's done uh, mostly because of one underlying mechanism. So despite the fact that Cilium integrates with Kubernetes, uh, it uh, uses its own ATCD cluster to uh, register its agents and uh, uh, store all the data um, uh, about networking it provides. So uh, th that's why uh, in Cilium you can push for features um, yeah, which connect multiple clusters. And for now it's done with um, pod connectivity, uh, but later I'll tell about um, the other use case of that. Um, and there is also BGP support um, uh, in Cilium. Um, it's not, uh, it's not done in the Cilium code base itself. It's rather done uh, by integration with Kubrotor. Kubrotor is an another CNI plugin and uh, network provider for Kubernetes. Um, but um, uh, since uh, Cilium community had an idea to uh, implement BGP support um, in Kubrotor, uh, you can uh, disable the CNI functionality and only run the functionality which watches for uh, ser uh, service IPs in Kubernetes and advertises them uh, uh, in BGP um, routing table. So the integration was like that. So uh, Cilium runs as a CNI plugin and handles network policies, but Kubrotor runs uh, in mode without CNI support and only watches uh, uh, Kubernetes API to advertise uh, IP addresses. There is also implemented support for uh, Cassandra and uh, Memcached as protocols. And uh, by support for them, I mean that you have extended uh, um, uh, custom resource in Kubernetes, which supports net network policies in which you can filter, for example, sp uh, queries to Cassandra. So you can uh, filter out specific select or insert or whatever operations in database. You can also filter out or filter in uh, based on tables. Uh, for specific uh, la labels in Kubernetes. So, for example, if you have some pod or deployment with some concrete label, you can tell it that, okay, you can operate on table A, but you can't operate on table B. And there is a similar uh, support for memcached in which uh, you can filter in or filter out uh, uh, based on keys in memcached. Uh, and based on uh, operations, uh, which you can do on keys on memcached. And uh, now I'll tell briefly about features incoming in version 1.4, <laughs> uh, about two of them. Uh, there will be a feature of multi-cluster services. Uh, so uh, you will be able to have a service which has backends across uh, multiple Kubernetes clusters. And uh, there is uh, ongoing support uh, of running on top of Flannel for now and in future maybe on the other CNI plugins. So uh, Cilium is, uh, will be able to run as a chain CNI plugin. So um, the first plugin uh, which is running will be Flannel. It will allocate IP addresses and create VAT pairs. And then uh, on top of that, um, Cilium as a chained plugin will receive that information, uh, create, a BPF pro uh, create BPF programs for those VS, uh, v, uh, uh, for those VF, uh, in devices. Uh, for now, it's only for Flannel. Maybe uh, other CNI plugins uh, will be supported in the next versions of Cilium. That's all I wanted to tell you today. Um, do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, because you're using uh, etcd as a backend for the agents, yeah. how much uh, workload it adds to etcd? Because I have some trouble with other programs which were adding too much etcd load. So did you benchmark? Uh, 
Uh, that's a good question. I have no concrete answer for that. I know that there is some... Um, okay, uh, so the question is about the workloads for ATCD and whether we've done some uh, benchmarks uh, about how many nodes uh, of uh, Cilium can be supported by ATCD cluster and uh, whether we, uh, we did some scale tests. Um, I don't have concrete, uh, I don't remember the concrete numbers right now. I can follow up with you and look up for that. Um, some benchmarks were done. The, uh, there is also planned work to even improve the scalability of uh, Cilium, but I don't remember the numbers right now. Yes? Uh, okay, so the question is um, uh, what experience did I have by using, uh, that we have, I assume, as Cilium community by uh, using a BPF? Uh, that's a very general question and uh, uh, I'm personally uh, n uh, not very engaged in maintaining the code uh, uh, for generating BPF programs specifically, uh, but uh, there are experience for, uh, of the whole uh, Cilium community is that we have performance gain and for example uh, we have benchmarks which, uh, which I can show later then uh, that's uh, for example by writing custom filters to Envoy which uh, implements L7 um, uh, filtering and routing by uh, BPF uh, we had a performance gain so the overall experience